what is up guys look welcome back to the channel i know it has been a while uh, since we had like a produced style video but we're here in the shop another bad day uh still in my buddy's shop um so i still ain't got mine ready for the boat because you know twins but um today a question i get all the time on social um you know i don't have a boat i don't I don't get to fish in lakes. I don't, I'm a, I'm a bank beater. I'm a pond guy. You know, I can walk the banks and do that. What do you recommend? Well, today, what we're gonna talk about, I'm going to build, in my mind, the ultimate pond tackle box. All right, so first things first. Um, you know, it, it is true that a lot of fishing is done from the bank and in ponds. Um, so a lot of times us guys that do this for a living take for granted that, you know, you can only do it in a boat or we can only show you stuff out of our boat. And that's not the case with me. Y'all have seen me walk around ponds before. Y'all have seen me at my house. I call it the home pond. Uh, it's not mine, it's actually my neighbor's, but I grew up fishing that pond. And um, I actually like uh, my love for fishing started there. Um, You've seen me at my buddy Ben's where I'm at now. Um, reel a few in from his pond walking the banks. You see me at Willie's catch some dang big ones from the bank. So, I mean, I say all that to say this, like fishing doesn't have to be done from a boat. In fact, I would venture to say that there's probably more fishing done walking the banks of these ponds than there there is, you know, otherwise. So. Um, that's why I wanted to do this video. I get asked it a lot and I try to type it out, but it just doesn't work. So we're gonna build the ultimate pond tackle bag. Starters, get you a good bag. This is the new H20X available exclusively at Academy Sports and Outdoors. Y'all know by now Academy is a very good partner of mine. Um, so they've had a complete rebrand on H2O Express. It used to be called H2O Express, now it's H2OX. It's got a really cool logo now. Um, it's like version two, you see the two in there looks a little uh, kind of the highlight of the whole deal. So we're gonna go through and we're just gonna build it out. Um, I'm gonna build out what I think are some pond necessities. Um, so without further ado, there's gonna be some brands that you know, there's gonna be some, some things you may not expect, uh, knowing me, but uh, we're gonna do it anyway, and we're gonna have some fun with it. So I, I'm just gonna start and in my experience of a pond. So um, let's start at the top of the water. And when we're mainly talking about bass, but we're gonna throw some, some other stuff in here. So let's start with top water. So my first top water I'm gonna choose is going to be um, an H2O Express plopper style bait that I've actually caught a bunch of fish off of. I remember the first cast I made with this bait. Um, I actually caught like a three pounder on it. So that's kind of cool. But that's that guy right there, plopper. You can see kind of, you reel it across top water, brrr, does that. But fish love them, fish everywhere love them. So that's gonna be number one. Um, next up, we're still, we're still gonna be dealing with top water hard baits. It's caught so many fish, it's probably kind of like elementary at this point, but a pop bar. Um, this is just your standard OG pop bar. You see, I've had a while, look at the rust on those hooks. But just a standard OG pop bar, uh, really good uh, when ponds have a lot of bluegill in them and things like that. Um, frogs, sky's the limit. I would probably stay away from a white frog because in most ponds, you're, gonna, you're not gonna be dealing with shad. So you're gonna be dealing with bluegill eaters or actual frog eaters. Um, and I'm gonna go so I'm gonna go with a smaller frog because sometimes ponds don't have big bass in them. So I'm gonna go with a smaller profile frog. That's a Pad Crasher Junior by Booyah um, there. And I'm gonna go with a bigger frog. This one in kind of a bluegill pattern. This is a Terminator popping frog. See, so I'm gonna get one of each. I'm gonna get a walking frog and a popping frog. Popping frogs, don't worry. You can still, um, you can still walk them just fine. So that's kind of my deal there. Um, and then that's gonna be the top waters that I'm gonna use. So 
like I said, here's the thing when you're doing this. So you see, I still have a lot of room in this box. So let's find something to mix and match that with. And I don't know what I'm going to do just yet. I think I do know, actually. I'm going to move on to one of my favorite pond baits, period, end of story, that I've caught a ton of fish on. And that's square bill crankbaits. Um, easy to be fished from the bank. They're overall pretty weedless. So um, that's another thing you got to think about when you're doing this pond fishing is like, can I get my cricket back? Because you can't, if you're walking the bank, means you ain't got a boat. And if you don't have a boat, getting it back could be very difficult. So, um, you know, let's, uh, we're going to look at a couple of different styles. What I'm going to do here. My boy MDJ, Mark Daniels Jr., y'all know him. If you don't, go check him out. He's a professional bass angler. He's also a duck hunter um, and, and somebody that I consider a very good friend. Has his own line of crankbaits out uh, with Bill Lewis. Now, y'all know by now if you follow me on social and you've seen that I'm with Rapala. But look, I'm a, I'm a team player. And when my buddies come out with stuff, you can look that one out there, Ben Chew, got teeth marks on it. But I'm going to use a, I'm going to get a black and chartreuse, uh, SB 57 to support my boy Mark, because that's a circuit board bill. Um, so it's a little different than say your standard square bill. Now, in this guy right here, sky's the limit. These are all H2O express square bills. They're actually one of my favorite. Um, y'all know a guy by the name of Jacob Wheeler. He almost won the classic off of a H2O express square bill. So that's kind of cool but uh with that i'm i'm bearing in mind that pond fish are a lot of times uh bluegill eaters or um crawfish eaters so i'm gonna get once a straight bluegill pattern h2o express um and then i'm gonna get one that is a crawfish yeah we're just going crawfish let's go here Let's go red crawl. They'll eat him. They don't just eat him in the springtime, folks. So let's, uh, let's get that in there. I'm not going to go with anything deeper on just for bank fishing from the pond because, like I said, you got to get it back. When you're coming up, the pond is going to be super shallow. So in that box now, we've got, it, we're basically sticking with hard baits. So I'm looking for more hard baits that I may would throw in here. And I just don't think I have any that are gonna fit the mold, but I tell you what will work in there. And one that I'm gonna have on me no matter where I'm at, which is a chatterbait. Um, so, right, y'all know me, I love, I love chatterbaits. Um, big fan of the Z-Man jackhammer, but, so we're fishing from the bank, right? So, when we're doing that, odds are we're not gonna be able to get that bait back. So I'm not gonna use a $17 bait. That's gonna be hard to get back if I get stuck. Instead, I'm gonna go with the OG jackhammers that are like six bucks. So if you lose one, I mean, it still kind of sucks, but it's not near as big of a deal. Uh, white and chartreuse, pond fish love white and chartreuse. Um, that's a fact as old as the test of time. Um, and then let me look here. I'll probably even go with a darker one. Yeah, like an OG black and blue too. So, uh, black and blue chatterbait. So you got kind of both color spectrums. You got white chartreuse. You got, um, you got black and blue. While I'm in this box, I also have my swim jigs in here. So I'm gonna actually choose a Fin Commander swim jig. I will go with my favorite one. Uh, swim jigs are great. They allow you to fish them super shallow. I think we call this one Sneaky Shad on the Fin Commander website. So got him. He's gonna go in there. You see, I am getting a little white, but white's gonna be like reaction bait specific. So, um, and then look, he, look at all the threads missing off him. All the skirt missing off him. This is a Finn Commander in uh, Green Pumpkin swim jig. So I'm gonna throw him in there as well. Um, and we're just gonna keep working our way through these baits. So put that back up so I don't ruin the skirt. Um, that looks pretty good. I like where I'm at right now. I go fishing with this box and we still got plenty more to add to it. So. The other thing you can do, 
and I've got them right here somewhere. I keep a box of these things. Where are they? I'm just gonna throw this whole box in there. I'm gonna take one of those boxes out and I'm gonna put this box in. So you see, this is a bunch of really small crankbaits. Let me uh, open that up and show them to you. So really small crankbaits. You know what's cool about really small crankbaits? Can y'all see those? Look at there. What's really cool, I'm gonna take you out though, Tiny. Ooh, I don't need OG Tiny in there. Look at that. I got another spot for you. Um, so like this style crankbait, that size right there. What's cool about that is any fish that swims, the other things in here, little baby rattle traps. So I have caught bluegill, I've caught bass, I've caught crappie. If he lit a catfish, you name it. If he lives in a pond, he'll eat that. So again, I'm trying to do as many baits that'll catch as many things. I, now granted, we are kind of focusing on bass, um, but those right there will catch anything that swims in a pond. That's why they're going to get their own spot in there. Um, so I got four more holes. I need to make sure that I'm doing good by. And let me look through some of these hard baits. I want to kind of keep some things together. Like this box isn't necessarily going to hold a lot of water after it's wet. So, you know, the other thing I can put in here is hooks. So... Uh, right here, VMC Redline Hooks. This is a 3 alt um, hybrid wide gap. This hook right here, very user friendly. <laughs> Dang, I undid the keeper when I popped that off. That's unfortunate. But I can put the keepers right back on there. And the good news is they all fell in one spot. So I knew I was missing one. One of them made it in the box. He knew where he was going. But this hook right here can be used for a lot of different things. Let's close that up. So, 3 all pretty standard size, can be really good for, like, some other baits we're going to get to. So, that's what that's what I'm going with. 3 all three hybrid, wide gap hook. Because, um, again, I'm going to run out of room here at some point. So, I need to maximize efficiency on that. So, i got some hooks. Trying to think. Yeah, I need some more hooks. Um, where are they? I got some VMC Redline Wacky hooks that are going to go in here. So I'm kind of oh, kind of giving away some of my stuff of what's coming next or down the line. But I need to have some hooks for Wacky Worms. And that's going to fill up my box. So I'm going to put some weedless VMCs in here. Look here. Let me show you. Right here. Boom. Number two, VMCs, they're going in there. The other thing I'm gonna go ahead and put in here while I've got my hook box open is some shaky heads, little small quarter ounce shaky heads. So those are going in. And then, 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 don't, don't need a one ounce weight. Oh, I will need some weights. So let's go right here. These should be quarter ounce VMC tungsten, they are. Let's go with just three of them. How about that? So there we go. We got our first box loaded. Look at there. Boom. That's the end. So we're gonna put him, we're gonna take one out. We're gonna swap them. They're the same exact size, good, with this guy. Kind of our utility box that we've already done. And now let's build another one. So, um, stick worms. Cinco's, whatever you want to call them. Doesn't matter to me. We're going to put some of those in there. Basic five inch stick worm, watermelon red. I ain't ever met a bass that didn't like watermelon red. So we're going to put a handful of those in there. Um, if it is some smaller fish, look, they make them in different sizes. We're going to put the four inch version in there as well. Not as many. I'm going to try to get them to eat the five inch because that's the size fish I want to catch. So those would be put up. Right there. Now, we're going to keep going. Standard curly tail worm, Texas rig. Uh, let's get this color right here because we don't have anything this color yet. This is a Zoom Mag U-Tail 7.5. Another one that has caught fish all over the country, all over the world. We're going to pop them out. We're going to pop some of them out. Handful and put in here. Because the Texas rig worm still works, ladies and gentlemen. 
Just a standard Texas rig worm. The fish ain't they ain't that smart yet. Let's see. I'm gonna I'm gonna do a crawl style bait. I can't show you the names of this stuff, but I can show you that it this is what's coming from Rapala. So I can't show you names, I can't show you designs, but just know that it is a crawl style bait. So you'll notice in the other one, in my other box, I had a green pumpkin swim jig. So I'm gonna grab a couple of these for trailers. So I got me some green pumpkin trailers, along with having a small compact bait that I can flip around trees and stuff. And then since my white one in that is buried, we're just gonna go over here to an old favorite. Um, ones that I used on just about everything. A Zoom Z Crawl Junior trailer. We're gonna take a box of them, a package of them, throw them in here for swim jigs and tra chatterbait trailers. So that gets, and, but you can flip those things too. So that's what I'm saying, get dual purpose. I'm not gonna waste any space on swim baits because swim baits, I'm like, very specific like it can only be one thing so i'm not going to use them for anything i'm not going to take up valuable um space with that i'm also going to use a bug style bait um so y'all know like when i say in bug like brush hogs and and all of that kind of stuff this is what this would fall in the category of it's not a brush hog it's actually a new one from the rapala that we're working on can't tell you much about it, but just know that that is a bug style bait. Um, not a creature bait, a bug bait. So a little bit bigger, um, got a little more oomph to him. Um, so I'm gonna combine my Senko box just so I can get some trick worms. Uh, this shaky head bait, you can wacky rig them, you can do whatever you want. I'm looking through my color selection that I have. So I got darks, I got whites, I got green pumpkins. Um, go with kind of a brown. I don't really have any brown in here yet. So, this guy right here. Boop. See that? Let's go with him. Looks like a worm anyway, right? So, I got those guys. About out. Done, done. Okay, moving right along. Put that back in there. And now this box right here. So what I'm gonna do with it, I got another box right here. This is gonna be key. I'm gonna put some fin spin, probably some chartreuse. These are one eighth ounce, so I can cast them a little further, but still got plenty of room. So I got some chartreuse fin spin. Uh, they're a company we work with on our fin commander. I will do some pink. A few pink fin spins, um, some orange and chartreuse, and I'm even gonna put a couple of these Pro Series fin spins in here. So, why? Why are you saying, why are you doing that? I'm gonna put just some regulation jig heads in here too. Just regulation light wire jig heads. Why am I using light wire? Because like I talked about, I'm not gonna be able to get them back. So. Light wire, if I get hung up or something goofy, it'll bend out for me, as long as my knot holds. And I think I've been doing this long enough now that I can depend on my knot to hold. So, let's do one more of these Pro Series. Let's do a little bit brighter. So this is kind of my hook selection in the small days. See them there? Boom, done. I'll put that up. And, to fish with them, you gotta have some body. So I'm gonna go through some assortments here. I don't even know what's in this box, but it's, oh, these are my favorites anyway. That's why it's up here. So these are gonna be all versions of chartreuse. Blue, white, and chartreuse. Some people call it like a blue thunder. We are gonna, we gonna have him, look at there. Boop, got him. Um, let's see, let's go with a little bit green chartreuse. So another little, Another really bright one. Hold it up like that where you can see him. 
the OG, the official fish catcher when you can't get a bite if you need something, black and chartreuse. I don't have to show y'all much about him. Um, I do, I really like blue and chartreuse as well. So if there's crappie in your pond, I'm hooking you up here. But you'll notice I'm gonna go with all chartreuse, no shad colors. Um, Cause there's not many minnows that live in a pond per se. There's a black and golden chartreuse. We'll add him to the fray. And then a purple, and you're gonna laugh. This is one that I like to call lavender. It's hard to get, look at that purple. Ooh. For years until I started working with them guys over at Crappie Magnet, I had to make that color myself. That's how much I believed in it. Um, was to do that. So started working with those guys. They made it for me. Made it a lot easier. Made it for me, and then they made it also for you guys at home to sell. So, um, so that's going to end my boxes. It's going to end my boxes inside my tackle bag right there. So we got four in there. This one will hold four boxes. Very easy. So now what? You say. We'll zip that up. I've got a box up top. And then I've got all these pockets I can fill with. So what do you do with that? So we're gonna fill in with some other things. So like, let me look. Let me, each of these pockets has a design. So right here, what am I gonna put here? I I'm going to put scissors. That way, if I need to cut my line, my dentist won't be mad at me. Scissors can go there. I'm also going to put, where is, here it is, my Rapala scale in there. Because you know, folks, if you don't have a scale, they ain't going to believe that you caught that big one. So that's going up front. There's a lot of storage in this thing, which is really cool. Um, this pocket right here, I can tell you what I'm going to put in here. I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to grab me a spool of line. So that's going to be my line compartment. That way I've always got extra fishing line. I get hung up, I get broke off. Oh, and it's actually four line. Look at there, you can run your line right there. You can run your line right out there, and it'll spool while it's in there for you. I didn't even realize that. It's just what it looked like it was designed for, for me. So you're saying I put a lot of stuff in here. In now what? You need, you need one rod, you need one reel. I'm gonna set those pliers out before I lose them. I got a smaller set. But you don't have a lot of tackle. You don't have a lot of rods. You don't have a lot of reels. You don't, I, I don't know what the situation is, but generally you don't wanna carry a whole lot. So here's what I'm taking with me. I hope I got them. Yep, here we go. I, I know I don't have one because one I still got at the house. But so I'm gonna take workhorses, right? I'm gonna take a medium speed reel, not a high speed reel, on a seven foot, somewhere around seven. I think this one's actually seven three. Nope, seven one. Seven one medium heavy with a fast tip, so I can fish just about anything on it. Um a workhorse, so like with this, I can fish a chatterbait, I can fish those square bill crankbaits, I can fish the top waters. Again, we're talking about if you have to, like granted, now if I'm out in my boat, I'm gonna fish top water on braid, but I'm, I'm not in my boat, I'm walking a pond. So if I have to, I can fish anything I put in that bag on this for bass. This guy right here, a spinning rod, spinning reel. You can see right here that I've got a shaky head on this one. Um, but I can throw any of that other stuff. I can throw a wacky worm. I can throw those small crankbaits. I can throw um, anything. I mean, I, that's what I, that's what I'm that's why I'm taking it because I can use it for so many things. Um, and I'm also going to grab one smaller spinning rod and reel that I can do the crappie fishing, brim fishing, you know, the stuff of whatever comes up kind of fishing. That that's what i'm gonna i'm gonna have three rods with me one bait caster two spinning poles and then i can catch anything that lives in a pond um 
Now granted, this spinning rod here has got braid to fluorocarbon. You don't have to do that. I'm not telling you to do that. Go put all mono on it. Go put mono on everything. Get you some stretch so maybe if you do get hung up, you can get your stuff back. But those, these are the kind of videos I really like doing because they're the questions from you guys. They're not, what do I think y'all want to see? These are questions that I get asked all of the daggum time. So hopefully today's video shed some light on some of that stuff for you guys. Um, you know, keep commenting, keep sending me questions on Instagram, keep sending them uh, via Facebook. Just keep sending questions and I will answer them as I can. As y'all know, the twins are getting bigger. Um, they're getting a lot more fun. So hopefully a lot of these videos will start featuring them here um, sooner rather than later. But thank you guys so much for the support. Look, we'll see y'all next time. I thought I had something profound to say, but I obviously don't. Thank y'all.